This is uh, March 3rd, and it's the meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee, and I am calling the meeting to order. Uh, per the governor's orders, we're allowed to have this meeting virtually. So the first thing I wanna do before we show the agenda is go around the room to make sure everyone can hear and be heard. So when I call out your name, just indicate that you can hear us or whatever. And I'm gonna use the order that I see people on the screen. Anthony? Here. Dwayne? Here. Steve? Here. Allison? Okay. Here. Diane? Here, good morning, but only until eight, unfortunately. Good morning. Phoebe? I am also only till eight. Shane? John? Not Shane, I'm Shane. Sean? <laughs> yeah. Jonathan? Good morning, here. And Ben? Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, did you acknowledge Miss Miriam? Pardon? Phoebe, did you acknowledge Phoebe? Yeah, Phoebe. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Phoebe, did I, did I forget Phoebe? Phoebe? No, I'm here, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, both Mike um, and Paul have said they will not be joining us this morning. Mike <laughs> sent me in one comment on the draft request uh, for services, um, and that is the only item on the agenda today, actually. So um, I know Diane needs to leave early. Um, so what I would like to do- and Allison. And Allison needs to leave early also? Okay, you both need to leave early. So what I'd like to do is start the meeting right away on the draft, unless anything, anyone else has any comments first. Steve, did you have a comment? Okay. So we, we sent everyone uh, the draft, which our uh, subcommittee um, on drafting revised and I sent a list of the revisions, the main revisions we made last week and Anthony can put it up on the screen and maybe Jonathan as chair, you could just walk through some of this changes in the goals and the changes in the weighting. And then we can see if there are any comments and just so everyone understands, this is our final, we're hoping final review. And that if we get to final, we're planning on submitting it for review by MSBA staff by the end of this week. And they ask for two, at least two weeks to review. And then if once if they don't have any changes or if they have changes and we make them, then we'll be able to be put it in the register and post and start getting um, people to apply to be OPMs and start that process. So this, this triggers the process of selecting an OPM. <clears throat> So Jonathan, maybe you just walk us through the, I think the main changes were in goals, correct? Yes. I'll let Anthony scroll down. Uh, um, you wanna start with objectives or you wanna go down to uh, the grading? The, no, project um, objectives. I think that we yeah. should start there. So we, we, uh, we had a couple edits or suggestions last time. Um, we discussed them as a committee and we, we did adopt a couple of those and I'm, I have to admit, I'm reading it as I'm going, just trying to remember where they were. Um, yes, that's right. The second one, dedicated space for special programs and special populations was a suggestion change. I think we had called out uh, you know, specific um, spaces in, in the prior draft. Uh, and then moving down, um, I think we may have made a small edit to natural light throughout the building. Did, or we did, did just, yeah. yeah. Um, did I, I think we added the COVID line or did we have the COVID line? I, I apologize, I can't remember. We, I had we, COVID, added. we had COVID before, but we did the okay. include, including daylight and view in the classroom to natural okay. light to emphasize that we meant in the classrooms as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then I believe the next one, that was added in was the compliance with the town's wage theft bylaws, or have I missed something, Anthony? Uh, it's mainly we added the word capable after net zero energy because it was. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to right. have someone. This is my conscience <laughs> remembering yeah, some of these edits. And then um, the very last one was added too, or maybe Anthony, the achieving pub 
project yeah. Yeah. as well, controlling yeah. costs mm -hmm. to cost effective. So I have one addition, one change um, Mike wrote in. I asked about auditorium space and he said um, that MSBA elementary school program would, would not want an auditorium space that wasn't multi-use. So he provided suggested wording that would be a space designed for use for school-wide assemblies comma performances and production as a substitute. So I can read that again, a use for school-wide assemblies, comma, performances, comma, and productions. And that allows for things like a cafetorium or a dual use of a gym where gym is, so is, I'm basically that was a suggested change and I thought it was a good one coming from the schools. Mm. So I don't know, does anyone else have any comments on this? Because this this is the generic goals um, and we do say these among others. Um, so this is what people would see as we're hoping um, the uh, newly built, the renovated building would have in them beyond the usual classrooms, gyms, Gyms are assumed to be in everyone. So that's why this that's not called out there for those from schools. Okay, I'm not seeing any others. So mainly we can go down to the evaluation criteria. So here, we, we varied the, the weights a little bit. Things don't total up to 100 anymore, but we didn't feel as a subcommittee that that, that was you know, particularly important, that, that really it mattered more about the, the weighting um, and, and making sure that our weighting reflected our goals, I guess is the, the way I could put it. Um, and so, I, Anthony, I don't think we changed one or two. I, I think don't the believe changes further down um, under, where did they go? Did we changed the we, we, we increased this one, yeah. right? Yep. At this point we have, you know, red marks next to so much of the document. Right. <laughs> yeah, and all the changes get folded change. in. Exactly. So I'm not sure what, yeah. Yes, we increased the weight on number C under capacity yep. and skills as, um, uh, we're hoping to all along the way with this project, the community facing when we are about to make decisions or when we have choices. Um, so wanting to know that they've been engaged that way. And we increased uh, minority and women owned business. The 15 from 10. Yeah. Or was it 15 from five? 15 from five, I five, think. Five, yes. Yeah. I think that accounts for our 15 points. I think we did five points up here and 10 points down 10 here. Points down there. Yep. So Paul, just before he left, um, when he announced he wouldn't be here earlier this morning, said his primary um, hope on all of this is we get the best possible OPM. <laughs> 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 you know, so, um, you know, the background checks we're doing in the interviews to get someone who can really guide the process and um, be um, tough, be, be a good guide when we're facing decisions on saying, you know, you could do it this way or that way, but um, you might want to consider the following. So I think that is um, Anthony, uh, Anthony uh, Jonathan can tell me, you know, in the interviews with people and in the background references, that's where we're going to get that kind of qualitative flavor on, aside from they are competent to do this, what is it like to work with them? I would agree. I, that's where that best sort of information is going to come out. We're going to get uh, hopefully lots of, of very, you know, very qualified um, candidates that respond. Um, and what we're trying to find is, as, as Paul has said, the, the very best that's going to work the best for us. So does anyone... Let's give 100 points. Let's give 100 points for that. Right. right. <laughs> as if it was that easy. <laughs> best possible OPM, 100 points. 
So I'm not seeing, um, I'm looking on the screen and maybe I have to put up the um, participant list. If anyone has a comment, they can actually just be informal and call it out at this point. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. So um, Anthony will then make this final. And uh, my understanding from a quick conversation is that Mike has been designated as the key com contact with MSBA. So once we get it final, Mike will be the person who submits it. And we, we've been assigned a coordinator who up until now has been very, yeah, Anthony, keep the schedule up here, Anthony, a little okay. bit so yeah. everyone can see what, what that is. So they ask for it to come in, um, that's, this is their schedule. They ask for it to be to them two weeks we, before we put it in the register. So if we can get it to them on Friday, we're well before that. So we think at the latest we'll be in the register by the 24th. And then the rest of this schedule is designed to meet each of their target points and get them back our final selected OPM, uh, the group we've selected by May 5th. Um, we have to make May 5th in order to be on their June 7th panel. So these are their dates. So these, you'll see these are the key issue, the key points along that, that we're gonna get interview people, shortlist, pick the final, per, final group, negotiate and then submit our selection. And one of the things they're asking is that we document that each step of the way when we do our final selection. So what did we hear? What did we ask during the interviews? What did we hear back? So um, at this point, we don't have a next meeting for the full committee set. Um, so for, for in uh, April, um, so we could make it that week of uh, that third week in April. Um, I, maybe I'll get back to everyone on the best date because trying to figure out what part is subcommittee and what part is full committee is something we haven't done yet. So our meetings will always be this Wednesday time unless we can find a time. I know this is difficult for Diane and for Allison. Um, because they have to leave early, but uh, any questions on this? I don't see any. Kathy, this is um, Sean. This is more of an observation, not really a question. It, it seems like the, and you guys know your workload, but um, the time for shortlisting respondents seems pretty like a tight turnaround from when you get the responses. Um, I guess that'll sort of depend on how many you get, but a lot of times these are really big books of information that you might get from these OPMs. Um, yeah. And, and then the interviews, I remember again, depending on how many you shortlist, I know those took, um, I think we might've done those over a couple days last time around. Cause I think we interviewed, I want to say three or four of them. Um, and they were pretty lengthy interviews. So again, it's, it sort of depends on what you get, but just a couple comments from last time. It's definitely tight. It's tight. And I think the place we might get an additional week um, is if we get this draft in by Friday mm. and, um, and they review it with fairly minor changes. It's just that they, they want two weeks to review and we've given them more than that for that 24 fourth date so we could potentially if we get it into Friday we could possibly be in the register earlier than that you know and you know just again on what that initial review process is so that would give us um, some additional time that wouldn't change the 19th right it could Oh, good. Okay. It would, well, if we, yeah, if we get it, if we get the RFS in the central register earlier, then we could just we could just move this date up and leave the deadline where it is, or we could yeah. move everything up and give ourselves more time for evaluation. 
Um, there's arguments in favor of both, but this is this is a very tight timeline. I would I would be inclined to give ourselves a little more wiggle room here. So Anthony, is this this schedule is the um, once we get it to them, we can change this as long as we get right. Other than I'll, in, I'll include that in the email I sent to Mike to send to MSBA that if they can approve us earlier, we. We'd, we'd like to expand the schedule a bit. I don't know how this, how, I don't know how this process works, if it's like a little bit of back and forth or if they, if it just kind of goes into a black box and comes out again. Um, well, this, this pro, the, at least my one experience with the project coordinator, when I sent her a question, she got back with me to me like two hours later. So I think we're yeah. assigned someone who jumps right on this and yeah. pulls in the resources. So. Any other questions or comments on this? You know, I also thought, you know, it's whoever is reading the documents, there's a lot of reading um, and then getting background interviews in a condensed amount of time. Um, but if the readers simply block out the 20th and the 21st, just right, it can be done, right? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. pretty much what would have to happen. Yeah. 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 So you just have to, any of the, all the, the readers will, yeah. But the goal is to not extend the bottom there to beyond six ten, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, really five five is when it has yeah. to go to MSBA, and we lose control of the timeline. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, and then there is this um, negotiate the price tag of all of this in there too. But all of that has to be as as Anthony just said, Steve. That yeah. May fifth date. If we miss the May fifth date, we're we, on July rather than June. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've got the weekend that week. <laughs> I've got that blocked out, so yeah, I'm ready to help. Okay. I, I have no idea how many responses we'll get for something like this. Okay. Yeah. So even for even for Fort River, we got three, and that wasn't an MSBA project, so. Yeah. So maybe ten then. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Well, then if we, and if we um, block the time and are prepared with, you know, sh rating sheets that are big enough to write comments on, you know, then it, that kind of read can go faster. So any other comments by anyone? And then I'll, I'll get back to people with the next meeting date once we just figure out what this schedule is looking like. Um, so when the next full committee meeting would be. I don't see any hands up. I'm assuming we'll have public comment. Yeah, we are. I'm just making sure yeah. on the committee and I've got the full committee list. Okay, nobody's hands are up. So then I think we are um, we will turn to public comments. And the call in person has his hand. I see one person, Anthony, with hand up. And so we'll call on that person first. Okay, caller, if you unmute, um, you're muted right now. You, we brought you in and we can hear you. And if you would please state your name um, and where you live. Okay, uh, my name is Vincent O'Connor. I live at 175 Summer Street in Amherst. <clears throat> and I was actually encouraged by the editorial comment in the bulletin by Bruce Coldham uh, to think about your, your goals and so forth. And um, given that, this, that the two buildings that are, um, one of which will be the subject of this process, um, are 50 plus years old. Um, I, I hope the committee will um, think about what the climate is going to be in 50 years. And, and the, um, we've had a fairly stable climate. We have done without air conditioning. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
we've done without air conditioning in our buildings, and I think that may be um, not a wise decision for the future. Um, and we've also, uh, and I, you know, given the potential instability of the climate over the next 50 years, I would certainly suggest that um, a system that allows uh, for the heating and cooling process in the building uh, to be, you know, so you don't have a stop point and you stop, you stop heating and go to cooling, uh, essentially a two-pipe process uh, might be a wise thing to look at for, you know, when you're looking 50 years out. Also, with regard to Bruce's thing, um, having hail-resistant glass, uh, I think might be important. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, we may have to deal with this, but I think we have to. And, um, you know, this is a Midwest, uh, Southeast process. <clears throat> Sorry. And and also a a tornado assembly location in the building. Just trying to think about, because uh, you can't really, if you have a tornado warning, you really don't want to start putting kids on buses and sending them home to homes that may not have parents. Um, so you, you may want to think about your one of your locations, the cafetorium or so forth, as a, a tornado assembly um, uh, location. Um, so those are just the climate-related things. And just related to all the all the construction that's going on that is assumed to be only for um, university students, um, things change. And once you have all that housing in place, there is a potential possibility that you may end up with families with kids so and and have a completely different um, demographic scenario than the one that appears to be on the immediate horizon. And I would just encourage the committee to think about maintaining control of both sites because there really is not any really good site left in town for a school. And um, and to think about the out, you know, years, what would happen? How would you go about the process of making sure we have sufficient elementary school space? And what is going to be the effect? I think you'd have to work with the region on this, on the region of, of reduced or increased um, school population. Um, I don't think we should assume that the direction we're going in now is the direction that 10 years from now we'll be going in. And, uh, and because the university is so dependent on out-of-state and out-of-country uh, student um, that uh, it's, this is a potentially um, a situation that could potentially change very rapidly and very substantially and have a really um, unfortunate impact on the, the need for elementary school space. So anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you for your comments, Vince. And just so uh, listeners um, and attend public knows, we are recording. Um, so we all take minutes, but we will be posting the recordings. Um, so the comments will be recorded both us listening to it now and for the future. Anybody else? Um, I'm not seeing any other hands. Wait a minute. No, I don't think so. Okay. So turning back to the committee, um, does anyone else have Comments, questions? Um, Did you say that Mike had one comment or was that Paul? Yeah. Had a comment? Mike's comment was the auditorium. 
Steve. Okay. I, I, when yeah. he said he, when he was said he wasn't sure he could make it, I said, what about the word auditorium? And he said, we, we actually can't, that a dedicated space that was just an auditorium would be unusual and, or not. Uh, so he gave us okay. that, that wording, that, that was it. And Got Paul's it. was, <laughs> Paul's was make sure the points get us the best possible person, you know, you know, team, um, which is, I think the interview and background checks and more, I don't think we can, we do have, in my opinion, we have a lot of points for experience and past performance through, through sprinkled throughout. Um, so. And so I, I know people have to go now, but the points are to get us to the short list. And yeah. then after the short list, do we redo the points or what happens then? You rank you rank them, but not based on not based on any kind of rubric. Got it. So the points only get us to the short list. Yeah. Got it. But I'm confident we we have a process for that. And that there's a disclaimer just before it that you will be a value to on these as well as others. You know, so it's, you know, we're 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 telling them what our weights are for for those specific attributes. Yeah. Kathy, can you remind me who's doing the interviewing of the committee? Um, I think that's a really good question, Phoebe. You know, right now we have, you know, the assumption going in, we have the subcommittee on OPM selection that started out with drafting. So um, we might, one issue would be, do we um, do a, a broader set of interviews when we get down to the finalists? And we certainly could do that. Um, would, you know, to, we've done that with the council, we've done, um, you know, if, if we're a full council, even if we're a subcommittee, we would have to be doing it in public, you know, so people, and then have some lead questioners with it. Um, Anthony or Steve or Jonathan, I mean, what is your, would it be, and the subcommittee has five people on it right now, um, including Anthony, because we particularly, we were drafting this request and he, he will be the, officer doing the contracting with it, um, but we don't necessarily have, we didn't, people weren't volunteering for subcommittee thinking about who would be doing the interviewing. So any other, any thoughts on that, Steve? Oh, Anthony has his hand up. I'm just pointing okay. to Anthony because he has his hand up, yeah. Uh, so I'm not strongly, I have no strong feelings about whether the subcommittee should be the ones doing the evaluation and interviewing. I have very strong feelings that anyone who's doing the interviewing should participate in reading all the responses and, and doing the shortlisting process. I don't think coming in just for the interviews is a very good idea. Also, Kathy hit on something that the interviews have to be in the sunshine, right? Yeah. They, they have to be at a public meeting, so. They have to be, right, that, that doesn't mean that, you know, they'll have to take public questions, but yeah, it would have, right. to, it would have to take place in a, in a posted meeting. Yeah. And so Phoebe, well, I see Diane also. Is Diane waving goodbye or? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Thanks so much. Allison as well. Thank you. But, but we would make sure because we're an Allison, but we're posting it. So you would be able to be, if you're not part of reading every document, you would be part of listening to everything that we asked of people. And those interviews will be important for the final selection. You know, so I, I, I think, Steve's point is right and Anthony's point is right that you need to both be reading what they've submitted in writing and including to guide the interviews. Um, any other questions or comments? So what I what I'll, will leave this at right now is we will get this um, ASAP to MSBA through Mike and once we hear back from them, we'll, we'll have a concrete schedule because we'll know, are we ready to go to the register? And the clock will start ticking on that. So we'll be able to send out a notice just to make sure everyone's available. For, keep your Wednesdays open for our next meeting and then look at um, when, when, what times a day we might be scheduling some of these others like the interviews. Um, but the 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 subcommittee right now, whether everyone understood that, including Dwayne when you signed up for it, um, 
at least that group will be reading every submission. So we can broaden, we, we could increase the group if someone wants to be on in that and we can, we can um, you can send me comments on it separately if you wanna think about it now, but it will be an intense reading project when these first come in. I'm not seeing any other hands up either in the little raise your hand technique or this way. So I think we can adjourn the meeting and I thank everyone for getting up early in the morning and uh, see you soon. Have a good rest of the week. Meeting is adjourned. Take care. Feel free. Thank you all. Thank you.